Support Wrestle Talk. Give us a subscribe. Before we kick off the Wrestle Talk news this morning, I wanted to wish the best to my best of frenemies, Mr. Davis, who undergoes surgery today to heal that injured shoulder he got from being blown up by getting a hair transplant. Seems legit. Mr. Davis will be out of action for a week or so, so head on over to his Twitter page and wish him the best in his future hair devers. And you know what? I'm still on the lookout for that son of a botch that blew Mr. Davis up. And a huge thank you to every single one of you for helping us pass the 800,000 subscriber mark on YouTube. We're so thankful to all of you who tune in to watch. And it also means that when he returns, Mr. Davis will do an episode of the Wrestle Talk News dressed as Maki Ito. Rhea Ripley was announced to be joining the Raw roster after this year's Royal Rumble, where she was the runner-up to eventual winner Bianca Belair. For weeks and weeks, WWE aired coming soon videos for the former NXT UK and NXT Women's Champion, a sure sign that there were no creative plans for her in place. And it turns out, there weren't. The only report out there was that she was going to debut after WrestleMania and likely be the first challenger to whomever won the Raw Women's Championship at Mania. The problem is, is that those plans were also up in the air. Originally, WWE had planned to do Charlotte Flair versus Asuka after the pair won the Women's Tag Team Championships. How will they possibly coexist? But that was changed to Charlotte Flair versus Lacey Evans, who would have beaten Asuka for the title at Elimination Chamber. By the power of blonde skull. But those plans fell through when Evans' shoot fell pregnant. Plans were changed back to Flair vs. Asuka, but they also fell apart when WWE reportedly misdiagnosed Charlotte as being pregnant, which she wasn't. So in the end, Rhea Ripley's post-Mania debut was pulled forward before WrestleMania and she beat Asuka for the title. Interestingly, when Ripley debuted, despite reports of her coming up as a heel, it had been reported that the Thunderdome audience were told to cheer her as a babyface, and then the following week were told to boo her like a heel, which has been the case ever since. However, according to Brian Alvarez on Wrestling Observer Live, fans this week were again told to cheer Rhea Ripley as a babyface despite the fact she was teaming with very much heels Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler, and acting like a heel throughout the entire match. It's just one more layer of confusion to Ripley's main roster start, and a frustrating one as there's so much potential in Rhea Ripley on Raw. But the constant last minute changes and indecisiveness about her character, or lack thereof, is squandering that potential and flattening her out, just like the rest of the Raw women's division, who've all been in variations of the same feud since October last year. And now it's time for this episode's sponsor, as read to you by the 2021 Royal Jamble winner, Adam Blompier. Before we continue, this video is sponsored by Tennis Clash, a free mobile PvP tennis game that'll see you slicing, drop shotting, and lobbing your way through countless real online opponents with just a flick of your finger. Battle your way through multiple tours, level up your character, and acquire new items to make sure you're the ruler of the squared circle, the rectangular circle, whatever a cool name for a tennis pitch is. It's free to play and available for Android and iOS. It's already served up more than 60 million downloads worldwide with some super high average ratings in the app stores. Download it free from the links in the description below or scan the QR code you're seeing right now and you'll start off with 200 gems and 500 gold to get you started right. Fun fact, I always wanted to play tennis when I was a kid, but my arms are made of spaghetti. However, Tennis Clash sees you zipping around the court with mere taps of your finger and choosing the power and direction of your shots with a mere swipe. You really find yourself in the quick reaction zone after a short while. It's fun, frantic, addictive, and super satisfying to line up the perfect shot. Again, download Tennis Clash for free right now from the links in the description and start your tennis career off the best way with 200 gems and 500 gold, and you'll be supporting PFK which is nice. Conspicuous by their absence since WrestleMania is AJ Styles and Amos, who won the Raw Tag Team Championships from New Day on Night 1, but haven't been seen or heard from since. It had been reported that this was because Amos was dealing with an injury of sorts, which was keeping the team off TV, which is quite typical of WWE really, if 
one of the team is injured, then there's no creative plans for the other one, even if that other guy is AJ freaking Styles. But according to Brian Alvarez on Wrestling Observer Live, this isn't quite the case. Noting that anyone missing from TV since WrestleMania, such as AJ and Amas, is because nothing has been written for them. The Raw Tag Team Champions. It should be noted that it's only Alvarez who's making this report at the moment, and the team will be making their first WWE appearance since winning the belt on the bump of all places today. Is Alex Queen of the Ring on this episode? No, no, she's not. Well, I guess we won't be watching that one then. Perhaps AJ and Amos will be back in time to see the newest debut of the Raw roster, direct competition from All Elite Wrestling. In a huge money deal, Turner Sports recently acquired the rights to NHL games for a staggering $225 million per season. This is certainly interesting to wrestling fans as NHL games traditionally air on Wednesday night, which could force AEW Dynamite off their time slot on TNT to make way for the far more popular hockey. This is particularly troubling for AEW as they can't air on Tuesdays or Thursdays on TNT as those days are reserved for basketball, which is why AEW Dynamite is on Wednesday in the first place. So that only leaves Monday and Friday, which happen to be the same days as WWE's Raw and SmackDown. However, according to Dave Meltzer on Resting Observer Radio, TNT likely won't move AEW Dynamite to Friday and go against SmackDown down as it will again split the audience like it did when they went against NXT. Only this time they'll be fighting the much larger channel in Fox. So that only leaves Monday night and the potential of a new Monday night war, the third one in 25 years. And it didn't really work out well for the competition the last time it was tried. But that doesn't seem likely either, as Melter adds that AEW's Tony Khan is adamant that Dynamite won't air on Monday night as he does not want to compete with the NFL. You know, there are only so many days in the week, Tony, and I ain't working Sundays to review your show. You may be wondering why TK is afraid of the NFL and not Raw, and that might just be because the latest episode, which was bloody awful, mind, dropped massively in viewership this week to 1.7 million viewers, a drop-off of quarter of a million viewers from last week. While the post-mania drop-off is real, that large of a drop-off should be alarming, especially as AEW's Dynamite, now that it runs unopposed, drew just half a million less eyeballed on Wednesday night. But now it's time for an intangible review by one half of the intangibles, Tempest T Wrestler, who's going to review this week's NXT. Take it away, Tempest. You know, that really is very funny. What's going on, WrestleTalk friends and fans? It's the Quizomania fact checker Tempest the Wrestler here, back to review another week's worth of NXT in about five minutes. Now this show kicked off with a match, so top marks right out of the gate. Too often now we see WWE shows start with a long promo, and it's not necessary. Every once in a while, it's really good just to have the first thing you see on a wrestling show be a wrestling match. The match in question was Mercedes Martinez versus Dakota Kai in a sort of warm-up match for Mercedes, as she will now be taking on Raquel Gonzalez for the NXT Women's Championship in two weeks' time. The match was alright, albeit a little bit clunky in spots, with Raquel Gonzalez ultimately hitting the ring for the disqualification. Gonzalez beat up Martinez around the ring, ultimately throwing her into the barricade like a javelin, a la Rey Mysterio in WCW. I hope these lame finishes don't continue on this show. Foreshadowing. We got a backstage segment with Ember Moon and Shotzi Blackheart where Dexter Loomis totally sent them flowers. It seems pretty obvious to me that the storyline will end up being that The Way sent the flowers to Ember and Shotzi as a way to distract Indy Hartwell and make her think that Dexter Loomis doesn't want her. Oh. I mean, it's fooling the hell out of the commentary team, so you never know. We got a promo from the Grizzled Young Veterans basically saying that MSK will take a match against anyone except them, and they are the tag team that this division sorely needs. Kind of agree to tell you the truth. They, of course, were interrupted by Timothy Thatcher and Tommaso Ciampa, who said that they were grizzled and veterans, and, um, huh. Ciampa's 35, he could be considered a grizzled young veteran in some people's eyes, but it appears that this will be the tag team match that we will be getting in the near future, something I am very much on board with. These two teams look like they'll mesh really well together. Tony Storm came out to face Zeta Ramir, and uh, this this is not Tony Storm's year at all, guys. This was a squash for about 95% of the match, with Zeta Ramir finally getting the win after Zoe Stark came out for the distraction. Ramir hit a very nice looking shooting star press for the win, but my goodness, the last 
last time Tony Storm won a match was in December. Where is the love for my girl Tony Storm? We then got the advertised match between Bronson Reed and Austin Theory, where if Bronson Reed won, he would get another shot at the North American Championship. On the whole, this was a pretty good little match with Bronson Reed throwing Austin Theory around. I like to see that. And then Dexter Loomis came out. And honestly, Tempest views regarding Dexter Loomis have been deemed too controversial and have been hereby censored by the All Authority. Why don't you just get a white carriage and take them all off in the end? Bronson Reed was able to pick up the win after all that tomfoolery with a tsunami, meaning he will challenge once again for the North American Championship in the near future. The way was backstage after the match upset about Theory having lost, and they said that this was Dexter Loomis' fault, and more specifically, this is Ember and Shotzi's fault. Ooh, lovers quarrel. I will have it be known that I actually did enjoy the two backstage segments with the way and Dexter Loomis on this show. True. We then got Imperium versus Killian Dane and Drake Maverick. Earlier in the show, we got Maverick and Dane backstage talking about how Maverick expected Dane to turn on him. Of course, after having watched so many years of pro wrestling, who can relate? Sure enough, the babyfaces had the momentum during this match before Drake Maverick was cut off. And as he went to make the hot tag to Killian Dane, Dane was ripped off of the apron, just like Maverick predicted. Dane ended up making the comeback for his team, but Alexander Wolf refused to hit him with a steel chair on the outside, sparking more conflict within Imperium. Imperium was able to regain control, however, as they hit the uppercut powerbomb combo and Drake Maverick for the win. We got the second of two Cameron Grimes vignettes as he was buying a watch, only to be upstaged by the million dollar man himself, Ted DiBiase. DiBiase showed him a million dollar watch and let him know that he didn't have Ted DiBiase money. I'll never get tired of that laugh. Ember Moon and Shotzi Blackheart were making their way down to the ring to face Aaliyah and Jesse Kamehameha wave when they were attacked by The Way. This is the rivalry that just never ends. The Way threw them over the barricade and just beat the hell out of them, breaking a glass vase over their head. Really good stuff. The bad part, they were gifted a street fight NXT Women's Tag Team Championship match out of this. I will keep reminding you, The Way has won one match as a team since January. We got Adam Cole's sit down interview where he said that as long as he is on the brand, Kyle O'Reilly will never be the top dog in NXT. He also said that he is looking forward to facing Karrion Cross at some point and that the clock is ticking. So maybe we'll get another shot at seeing Adam Cole as NXT champion again. You never know. There's a lot of people going for that belt right now. Kyle wants a shot. I imagine Finn Balor will want a rematch. Pete Dunne said on this show that he wants a match for the NXT title. Now Adam Cole wants a shot. That's a lot of guys. That's four guys. That's four guys. And then we got the main event of Legado Del Fantasma versus MSK and Kushida. MSK and Kushida hit a lot of really fun offense early, but Legado Del Fantasma were able to cut them off, hitting a powerbomb onto the announce table and taking Kushida out of the match. Nash Carter was also taken out in the melee, leaving Wesley alone to face the three men. Kushida was selling a lot on the outside, but eventually made it back in the ring, only to be hit with the Phantom Driver to take him out again. Raul Mendoza and Joaquin Wilde were able to hit their finish on Nash Carter, pinning them, meaning that we will probably get some version of these three guys challenging for the respective titles in the near future. On the whole, there were a lot of weird finishes on this show, ones that I wasn't really a big fan of, but on the whole, it was a pretty decent show. A low three out of five, in my opinion. And that wraps up another edition of the NXT Weekly Review. Make sure that you check out the NXT Review podcast later today with myself and Chopper Pete Quinnell. Until then, we only ask you to stay beautiful and jam that jam. You can set your reminder for Chopper and Tempest NXT Review by clicking the video on screen right now and check out Mr. Davis's review of that true dreadful episode of Monday Night Raw by clicking the other video. Hey, and go and check out WrestleTalk.com for all the latest wrestling news stories. And remember, jam that jam.